through because they've got that tissue over the top of the muscle. And so that's why they're seeking treatment. What's ki oh, it's kicking off in the chat? It's kicking off and I've neglected it. Oh, God. Right, it's all kicking off. Uh, good evening, JJ. Hi, Debbie. Emma, bingo wings and inner thighs. Can you get rid of them with weight training at the gym or is it just surgery and you need a shave? Lol, looking a bit rough this week. Ooh, rude. Rude. Huh? You know what? That's a bit, I, I, I have actually shaved, but I just shaved a little bit here and a little bit here. I haven't gone that deep. It's a bit of a fuller beard than normal. I've gone, I go deeper sometimes, a bit more George Michael before, uh, but this is a bit of a fuller beard bit of a macho look um so not sure about the roughness emma it's macho we're going for okay um but uh that aside um bingo wings and inner thighs classic examples emma of areas that don't really help with weight training at the gym and i'm not just saying that you probably think he's just saying that because he wants all the work he doesn't well he does he wants work but he doesn't want to do work if it would get better i tell you emma i would tell you if it get better but um the is good to do training at the gym it is good to be fit it's good to be healthy it's good to be as good weight but it's not going to help your bingo wings and your inner thigh because your bingo wings and your inner thighs are there because the skin has been stretched usually because people have, have lost weight so it's usually people who put on weight and then lost weight the weight has gone, which is fantastic and great, and carry on going to the gym to lose the weight. But the skin remains, and the skin hangs on the skin uh, on the on the arms, and it hangs on the thighs, and that doesn't get better with weight training. So you may well still need surgery, but it is good to do weight training and to be fit and to be healthy because you're going to maximise your chances of um, wound healing or what have you if you can get fit and healthy. But I'm sorry to say, it may not probably won't make your oh god i haven't got your question up come on amateur it probably won't make your um am i laggy am i laggy tonight it won't make your bingo wings or your thighs better emma uh debbie says it's rocking thank you it's rocking tonight thank you that's very kind of you to say that um yan hi i would like to know your opinion god that's totally blitzed me out on how uh, on how to help on upper abdomen fat after an fdl FDL, get in. That's a flirt -a tummy tuck for those of you who don't know, which is an in, sort of inverted T-shaped scar. I'm um, seven months post-op, but have a handful of upper abdominal fat, not loose skin. I am in healthy BMI and have not gained weight since surgery. And exercise isn't touching it. Um, shocked emoji, is that? Um, would, li would lipo or Aqualix help without ruining my FDL results? Yes. Don't know much about... Oh, hello. Hello. Sorry, sorry. Hello, it's a big comment that, so I'm gonna get above the, above the comment. Um, yes, uh, classic case of um, liposuction helping this one, Jan. Uh, so after tummy tuck, then, uh, then a fullness in the upper abdomen, if it's still there, especially your third lee, so your third lee, you probably lost a lot of weight. Um, and then I don't know much about Aqualix, not got no experience of Aqualix, but um, removing the fat would be the way to do it. And liposuction would be a good option for that, to that sort of top bit um, after a flirtily tummy tuck. So, yes, that's a nice one on the uh, weight loss. And seven months post-op, yeah, you should be good sort of time to think about doing um, liposuction. Yeah. Jan, I think live is actually be a good one for that. Oh, Jan's back in. The smaller comment now. Okay, get that down again. Ah, oh. right. Um, also, I'd like your opinion. Where is it on doing sit-ups after surgery from three months post-op and onwards, please? Uh, good co question, that uh, Jan. Uh, my comment on that, and I've got to say, I've got a new. I've got to say, Jan. Sorry, I'm gonna try and get this. A bit quicker. Disclaimer. Where is it? Disclaimer. This is. <laughs> you see, I've put a lot of this. I've done this before I came here on. This is my personal opinion only and is no substitute for an in person consultation. <laughs> right? Disclaimer. This is just my personal opinion. Um, 
I, actually, I should, should, shouldn't say, I should say an in-person consultation slash with, with your sir or with a surgeon or with your surgeon. So uh, this is just my personal opinion, Jan. But what I tell people is um, around three months, to be honest with you, around six weeks, I tell people that they can start getting back into stuff. But you've had a third lease. So that's quite a big thing. So maybe three months is good. But basically, after a couple of months, you can start getting back into things. Now, you might make it swell. It might be a bit uncomfortable. So I say, listen to your body. If your body says that hurts, that swells, that's uncomfortable, back off. Don't uh, do it. But certainly you can start doing exercise, start doing exercise after about a uh, couple of months. Sit-ups is quite sort of extreme, because if, if, especially if you have muscle repair, sit-ups is quite, um, uh, is going to put a lot of attention on it. So I, you know, a lot of this stuff, people say, when can I start doing stuff? I say, listen to your body. To be honest with you, Jan, I would start doing other exercises before sit-ups, but see how you go. Three months, you know, things should be pretty well healed at this stage, and you might find that you're all right doing sit-ups, um, but you might find that it really hurts, and if it really, listen to your body. If it really hurts, back off. If it swells, back off. You might have a binder, so it's probably good to wear the binder, um, but you know, I think you might be pushing it a bit for three months doing sit-ups. I think, you know, doing exercise would be okay because sit-ups is really going for it with that area. Um, but if it if it doesn't hurt and if you're okay, then carry on. But, if you know, start gently like anything. And if it's okay, then, then carry on. But I would start with sort of softer exercises already, but you might be doing that already, you know, stuff like the exercise bike, you know, stuff that doesn't put attention on your, on your core. Um, the stepper, you know. Not too much of the arms, you know, things like that. Another gym paraphernalia that I'm not really familiar with. The answer is macho is good. So there you go. Um, thank you. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, let's have a little bit scruffy. Still handsome. Emma, thank you. Steady on, steady on. Calm down. Inner thigh. So Jade says, inner thigh surgery, is there just the one option when it comes to scars? The long vertical scars down the inner thigh. Jade. It's quite a big comment, isn't it? Get over the top of that comment. Um, no, Jade. I think you knew that's a leading. That's what we call a leading question. You know there is one. No, there's more options. There's two options really for inner thigh surgery, Jade. One which is that long scar down the inner thigh, and the other is a scar hidden up in your groin crease. Up, up here, up here. Oh, God, it's probably best that I don't demonstrate that. Really, think about. It. Is it me or is it rays of light? I probably haven't really. Having said that, I thought this through. I probably have, I could have done better. Could I have done better with the background? Oh, anyway, so um, Jade. Uh, yeah, so there is two options. Uh, one is the 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 uh, much smaller incision in your groin, and it's much. It's well. There's pros and cons of both of them, and this is. If I could, I'd put that disclaimer back on, you know, this is my personal and all that sort of stuff. But basically, there's pros and cons of both. And, oh, it's gone to the bin. Um, and um, so the the one up in the groin, so not the one you're talking about, which big, long scar down the medial, uh, down the, the inner aspect of the thigh. One up in the groin is good because it's a smaller scar. It's hidden in your groin. You can't see it. It's hidden in a bikini and all sorts of things. Can't see the scar at all. Fantastic. What's not to like? The bad thing about that one is because it's a smaller scar, there's less of a lift because less skin is removed. Basically, with any sort of body contouring surgery, you're often removing skin and you often want a lot of skin removed, but lo not much scarring. That's what everybody wants. Loads of skin removed, no scarring. Those two things don't do it together. The more skin you remove, the more scarring you get. So you can't remove quite as much skin. But the other really important thing about that one, where it's hidden up in your groin crease, is the vector of pull is an upward vector of pull. It's pulling the skin up. And often in people who have a lot of laxity in their thigh, the, la the laxity is in a radial dimension, is a circumferential dimension. If, you, if they demonstrated to you what they wanted done, they pinch their medial thigh like that, like that. They pinch the skin. like that, pinch the skin like that. Um, and it doesn't do that. It, uh, it's a lag. Am I getting a lag? Well, you wouldn't know if there's a lag, I guess. Cause, um, so that's what they do, they pinch the skin. So um, it, it, when you do it in your, in your groin, you're pulling the skin up rather than cinching the skin down side to side. So it's, 
it's not as an effective uh, surgery. And also, whilst the skin is hidden up in the groin, it's a naturally hot and sweaty area. And so there's risks that the um, wound might not heal up properly and the um, and uh, you can get wound healing problems and infections and delayed healing. So you can get uh, issues with it. Now, the other way where you do that big scar down, scar down your inner thigh is a much more obvious scar. So people often say, I hate my thighs. I can't wear short skirts. I can't wear shorts. I don't, can't go out in public. Now, if we give you a big, uh, big scar down the inner aspect of your thigh, you might still not be comfortable going out in public and wearing shorts and swimsuits. So that is the problem with that one. But it does give you a much more effective thigh lift. It does tighten the skin much more effectively. Uh, and it has that benefit. For me and in my experience, I think the one where you give a big scar down the inner thigh is the best way to do it because the other one, although it is a um, less, less of a scar, hidden scar, it's not a good lift. And so it's a risk of not being happy with the result. It's no good giving less of a scar if, you haven't got, if you're giving less of a result, is it? You know, you just have no scar at all. Obviously, you have no result, but, you know, balance all about balance pros and cons so here we go denise is back in the uk are you good to have you back denise hope you had a nice holiday if you have the surgery for the bingo wings will it get rid of the wrinkles too yes so uh the the, the yes the the, the 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 skin will be tighter uh the whole uh, so the surgery for the bingo wings is basically the same as that thigh lift surgery big long scar down here same with the so equivalent of the big long scar on the thigh and it pinches that skin and tightens that skin so yes, it will get rid of that wrinkly uh, skin and it'll tighten that skin. But you still gotta be careful and you still gotta look after yourself and you gotta look after your skin. And when I say look after your skin, what I'm saying is sun exposure, sorry, getting suntans and stuff damages the skin. Smoking, not good for the skin. So you can get you know problems with laxity in the skin later on, but it is, it will get rid of that skin and tighten the residual skin. Laura's in the house, good to see you, Laura. How are you this evening? Laura's wondering how soon you can fly after a tummy tuck and what do you think about surgery abroad? Well, good questions there. <laughs> this is, I mean, these are like people that I've put, I've put there to ask these questions, uh, which I haven't, by the way. Um, Laura, I'm sure can vouch for me on that. Um, how can you fly after a tummy tuck? Well, the, how soon can you fly after a tummy tuck? Well, you can fly immediately after a tummy tuck. They're not going to stop you at passport control and say, wait a minute, you've, um, had a tummy tuck, you're you're not allowed on the plane, so you can you know get on a plane and fly, uh, but it's not great. It's not great to have surgery too close. Uh, sorry, have uh, to fly too close to surgery. First of all, you're going to potentially have um, you're going to have a wound. You're going to potentially have wound problem, wound healing problems. Um, and so, if you have any wound healing problems, like for instance, if someone was having surgery here and they say I'm going on holiday next week to recuperate or something like that, I would say it's probably best not to do that because if you get any infection, a bit of redness, a bit of a problem with the wound, and you give us a ring and we say pop in and we'll have a look at it, and you'll say, well, I'm in Marbella, we'll be like, oh, that's not great. Um, so I would say wait at least two to three weeks to get those wounds healed. Also, when you have a tummy tuck, one big risk of a tummy tuck is DVT, clots in your legs that can fly up into your lungs, and that is a big risk. And so uh, that is increased when you fly, economy class syndrome, you know, clots in your legs. So you're multiplying up your risks of DVT, um, and so you've got to be careful about that. Usher's wife, you know, Usher the singer, she had a, TVT, a DVT, I think she went to Brazil for surgery. Uh, soon after being pregnant, so she's just been pregnant, so that's another risk for DVT. So she was multiplying up her risks for DVT. So you don't really want to multiply your risks. So I'd say uh, specific, so two to three weeks ideally for the DVT and the wound healing thing, but even after two to three weeks, you're still going to be uncomfortable. Um, and it depends on which way around you're thinking about it. So if you're sort of here and thinking of recuperating for cert or going on holiday, I would say you want to wait at least six weeks because you're still going to be uncomfortable, probably a couple of months because you're not going to enjoy your holiday much because it's going to be uncomfortable because you're still going to be a bit sore. You're not going to want to carry your bags and you're not going to really, and you know, I would say if you're going to go on holiday, you want to enjoy it. So I would wait at least six weeks, you know, maybe a couple of months. Um, if you're talking about the other way, like saying I'm going to have surgery abroad uh, and then I want to come back home again, then um, yeah, I guess two to three weeks would be sort of like, the minimum but you have to be careful on the flight with keeping moving where those stockings you know those dead stockings what do i think about surgery abroad well it's interesting one it's something i thought about recently i saw a patient the other day who'd had surgery abroad and she had a great result and was really happy with it 
Um, and the fact is, I'm sure a lot of people will have surgery abroad. And have, well, they must do because it's such a popular thing. Um, and I understand why people do it because it's a lot cheaper. And, you know, and that's a good thing. Um, I normally advise against it, to be honest with you, Laura, because um, a couple of reasons. First of all, if you have a problem, if you have a niggle, if you're not worried, or happy about something, you know, you often have sort of restricted access to your surgeon. Uh, you can't go and see your surgeon. So you have to find out how you can talk to your surgeon afterwards, um, you know, ideally in person. You want to see them and say, look, how would you think of this scar? Would you think of this redness or whatever? This dog ear, this problem. If you need further surgeries, you need to go abroad again. Um, also, the, the training of the surgery is variable. Uh, training of surgeons, sorry, is variable across the world. Throughout the world, they're trained to different degrees. So it's hard to know what sort of training or what sort of level of training they've got it's hard enough as it is in this country but at least we've got a set training where you can say look if someone's got their training frcs plast they're fully trained in plastic surgery in the uk we know they're trained to a certain standard training in the rest of the world is trained to different standards it's not to say there's not good surgeons there there are good surgeons everywhere in the world but it's just hard to know what level of training there is in prague or turkey or cuba or wherever else you would go abroad for surgery. So it's just, uh, that makes it a bit more difficult. And finally, the other thing is the um, indemnity. So uh, we, re we have to be insured and we have to, all our facilities are regulated by the CQC, the Care Quality Commission, uh, to ensure that there's infection control and uh, levels of cleanliness and, uh, and uh, sterility are maintained. And again, it's hard to, I'm not saying they're not controlled abroad, but it's hard to know. I wouldn't say I wouldn't know what to say to you to look out for abroad because I don't know what sort of uh, bodies they have looking into these. I don't know what sort of indemnity insurance these doctors will have. You know, in any UK uh, private hospital like Spire, BMI, and what have you, you have to have a minimum five or ten million pounds indemnity in order to practice at the hospitals. So you're sort of covered. If you go to the hospital, you don't even have to ask the question because. The surgeons can't work there unless they're covered to that level of indemnity. And they, the, the hospitals are all inspected by the CQC uh, to ensure certain levels of policies, procedures are followed, and they look after patients properly. So you're sort of covered in this country because that happens without you even have to ask about it. Whether you are or not abroad, I don't know because it's different in different countries. Um, so my view is that, but it's like anything, if you think you're having something done, look for people do your research and if you think it looks good then you have to do the right thing for yourself and it's just a shame really that it is so ex uh, so expensive in this country because i think it is a shame that uh, people actually go abroad but i can understand why they do because it is i think a lot cheaper i, I don't know a lot cheaper abroad but you've got to ask why we well, just have asked why <laughs> that's why right so Gemma graham says yes Good on you. I agree with you. Debbie, the screen was rocking, but it's okay now. And the chat's good as well. Yes. Go, De oh, Right. Debbie's on. Jan's straight in. You're funny. Sorry for the long post. Five stone weight loss. Well done, you. Nothing to apologize about. Um, happy to have long posts and short posts. Laura, I'm wondering how soon you can fly after tummy surgery, and what do you think about surgery in other countries? Hold on a minute, Laura. Isn't that a rephrased question of what you said a minute ago? Hey, trying to get in there with duplicate questions. Can't get past me. I'm not going to answer there. Just refer to my comments earlier. Debbie, you need to be higher your chair so we can see you over the comments. You know what, Debbie? I've also got another option is that I bend my screen. How's that? Actually, I should have thought that before. Just bend the screen. Here to hear about slipping rib. All right, Sarah, calm down. We've got slipping rib. Slipping ribs in the in the in the, in the questions oh sarah's up for a bit of slipping rib action later on i'm wondering how soon you can fly and what wait a minute how you and what is your opinion of the safety of surgery in other countries like turkey and other countries laura i do love the comments and i do always support everyone's putting comments and to be honest with you duplicate comments is fine but yeah refer to the art earlier have you just got it it's written differently every time but laura thank you for the comments and uh, I think we've extensively covered that. Yan, thank you for asking the question. So thank you, we thank each other. Laura, she can confirm that. Not sure, what can you confirm? That you've asked the question three times. I can also confirm that you've asked the question three times. Laura, I can confirm that. Roxana says, hello. 
It's all kicking off in the chat here. I know the slipping rib's coming up, you know, guys. Don't worry. There is a slipping rib. We are going to be talking about slipping rib later on. Do not worry. Emma, would an arm, would an, would a arm lift be able to get rid of the skin in the lower armpit where your bra is? So have that bit of skin hanging over and I fly back on day 10 with compression garments and stop and socks. Well, it sounds like it's a fait accompli, Emma. So I'm not going to say anything bad then. Well, that'll be fine, Emma. You'll be absolutely fine. Good on you. Um, no, uh, Emma, an arm lift stops in the armpit, a, a, a sort of standard arm lift stops in the armpit. You're talking about the extra skin over the bra, hanging over the bra. That would have to, that would have to be addressed. You could extend the arm lift to address that, but that would be a bigger operation to get into that bit of um, sort of lateral chest then that bit that goes over your bra with the skin hanging over. So that will be a different, uh, or, or not necessarily different, that would be an extension of that procedure, but that wouldn't, is my mic, my mic's up all right? Am I all right on the mic? Mic number one. Mic number one. So that would be an extension of the procedure, uh, and it wouldn't be covered in a standard arm lift, Emma. So you'd have to uh, clarify whether that was included or not, because the worst thing you want to do is wake up and find that you've still got a bulge over your um, bra. Always got to be a bit careful with those bulges over the bra because there is always a bit of a bulge over the bra. But um, but if you've got a lot of skin hanging over there, then that might need to be addressed, uh, which you could extend the arm lift and, and address that. But it would be a bigger op. And you fly back on day 10 with compression garments and socks. Well, that's fine, uh, Emma. Um, hope, I mean, if an arm lift is quite a big op with a risk of wound healing problems. Hopefully you'll be all right at 10, day, day 10. And hopefully they'll look after you and make sure they've looked at you in the in the in the um in the hospital and they check your wounds and everything before you fly back and uh yeah hopefully you'll be fine um but and yeah just keep moving keep your arms moving keep your legs uh moving and keep everything circulating and uh good luck on that one emma but make it clear about the arm lift if you want that bit above your bra sorted that's not a standard arm lift that's an extension of an arm lift laura thank you can a stomach with loose skin be made flat with lipo Wow, that's a good question. Laura, thank you. Can I ask if you can give a lipo to a stomach with loose skin to make it fat? You're, hold on a minute, Laura, are you, you're in triplicate. Can I ask if a stomach with loose skin can be made flat and tighter with lipo and how I would get a quote with yourselves? Laura, what is, I mean, it's good to get the comments up. I think it is good to keep the numbers up, but, I, I, but anyway. Um, I think the questions are being repeated as it looks as though they've moved up off screen and not being answered. Oh, I see. Have no fear, Laura. I'm, I'm, I'm going through the questions. Yeah. Um, one, I, I, I'm not seeing the latest question, uh, the latest comment. I'm just going through the comments one at a time. So yeah. Um, so uh, a tricky one that one, Laura. You might see, think that it's not tricky. You might think these plastic surgeons know what they're doing and they can do a bit of lipo to the stomach. We often get people saying, "Oh, I just have a bit of lipo to my stomach." Lipo to the stomach is a, one of those ones where it's not in, again, disclaimer. Can't be, can I get my disclaimer out? Oh, I'll get my disclaimer out. All right, all right. You want the disclaimer. I understand. Yeah, disclaimer. Okay, this is my opinion. All right. And it's no substitute for an in person consultation. All right. So, um, but in my opinion, uh, Tummy touch, uh, sorry, liposuction to the tummy ha is not as good as you might think uh, because it doesn't remove the skin and the skin often doesn't recoil so well. So it's something we'd have to sort of look at in a consultation. Liposuction is good in certain areas, the hips, the flanks, lateral chest wall, outer thighs. Um, it's good in certain areas, but the stomach, the sort of fr front of the abdomen, it's, it's good as, as we said earlier, the upper abdomen after a tummy tuck but it doesn't remove skin. And people need a tummy tuck often because of weight loss, because when they put on weight, their skin stretches. When they lose weight, the skin remains. And when you do liposuction, it's sort of like the same as losing weight. You know, you lose the fat, but you still have the skin there. And so um, that is the worry about doing that. And that that's something that we'd have to talk to you about. And I'm not that keen on liposuction to the stomach. I think the best way to treat the stomach is with a tummy tuck. If you haven't got much, you can think of about a mini tummy tuck or a full tummy tuck. I appreciate people say a tummy tuck, you must be mad. I don't want a tummy tuck. I've just got a little bit of fullness there. I'm like, well, 
So, um, and I do always say there are assisted forms of liposuction, stuff like VASA, Smart Lipo. Um, what's that other one? Someone was talking about the other day. Anyway, there's all sorts of ones which got radio frequency or laser or uh, ultrasound, the VASA's ultrasound, some kind of assistance to the liposuction, which sort of heats the fat before you suck it out. And they say that they cause some skin retraction. So they might help. Uh, with uh, the tummy, if you want to have liposuction to the tummy. But for me, liposuction to the central abdomen is not as good as you might think. And if, uh, Laura, if you want to consult, if you want to know what the uh, quote with yourselves, give me your email address and I will send you a quote with ourselves and I'll send you some more information about liposuction and what could be achieved. You'd be welcome to come for a consultation. We can talk about it. But as I say, stomach liposuction, something we've got to be talk about got to be a bit you know a bit aware of the what could be achieved and what you're trying to achieve because if you want your whole con stomach contoured it sometimes is not as effective as you might think in your head think get rid of all that fat you want that skin to be tight as well right what we got going on would it would it affect my breast lift and implants i had done in feb no emma no i think emma's talking about the extended arm um, lift so no, it shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. It will just affect the bit that's a, the bit. I know what you're talking about. The bit of Emma's got that bit of fat. Do you remember, folks? Emma from earlier. She's got that bit of fat above the bra. So um, no, I don't think it will affect that. It, that's fine. You can have that done, even though you've had a breast lift and implants. Laura mistyped other comments. Lol. So deleted, then reposted. Lol. So don't think it's deleted other ones on Facebook. Didn't remove them. Laura, don't apologize. Great to have a bit of um, comment action. Triplicate it if you like. Triple it. Triplicate's probably not an appropriate word. Emma, I had my surgery in Feb. Breast lift with implants and TT with Mr. and Miss Ah, Miss MR. Okay, muscle repair. Not having that one again. Doesn't look like Mr. though. And Mr. And Hernia. Mr. And Hernia repair. It's a good name, isn't it? Famous surgeon. Uh, and abdominal sculpting and vasolipo and B oh my lord and BBL oh lord in Turkey I have already fly back oh there you go how'd it go look at that she guys Emma has surgery in February breast lift with implants tummy tuck with Mister and hernia repair and abdominal sculpting and vasolipo and BBL oh my lord in Turkey and I've already well Emma that is legendary amount of surgery you've had there. And I bet you look like a new person. And well done, you. And wow. Three letters. Wow. Hope it all went well. Fantastic. Um, have you dealt with a failed muscle repair? How many layers of sutures do you do? Uh, have I dealt with a failed muscle repair? Um, I have seen people who have had failed muscle repairs. I haven't had personally can't touch wood um, touch wood or is that wood over there that's a wood touch wood touch wood any failed muscle repairs um, but it can happen um, so personally I do one layer of sutures for the muscle repair specifically this is um, and you either use a long-term dissolving suture or a permanent suture and you use what's called a loop suture oh, I don't, how much do I need I probably don't need to get into this too much but I use a loop so most people you do it a similar way so you put a loop suture so you loop it at the top so there's no knot at the top and there's just one knot at the bottom which is a big knot it's a big very robust knot which we then use techniques to make the knot lie flat so it doesn't sort of stick up but um but it's usually a pretty robust suture but it's just one layer of sutures you don't do or i don't do multiple layers of sutures um and it's a tricky the, the problem with a failed muscle repair is a tricky problem to correct because uh, i saw someone the other day who had wanted it corrected not my patient other patient but um but it's a tricky problem uh, because it is very hard. It's a very, well, it's not very, but it's easy to do a muscle repair when you're doing a tummy tuck because everything's open, the muscle's just there. It's really easy to fix it all up. Once you've had a tummy tuck and you've recited the belly button, it's really hard to get above the belly button again, which is, you know, the muscle goes all the way up to the uh, rec, uh, to the zipper sternum, to the sort of rib cage. So it's really hard to re repair the muscle once you've had a tummy tuck. And, um, 
So I have repaired muscles on people who haven't had a tummy tuck. And again, that's how I know it's really hard. So you have to think what you can do with the belly button. You often do something called floating the belly button, which means cutting, dissect, taking the belly button stalk off, which is okay if someone's never had a tummy tuck. But if you've had a tummy tuck and you try and float the belly button, it'll probably die. So that probably wouldn't be good. Probably the best way, certainly the easiest way to deal with a muscle repair in someone who's had a tummy tuck would be to, to uh, access it directly. Go get up which is making a decision here uh, over the over the muscle itself. But that then looks like you've had abdominal surgery, or you've had abdominal surgery. So that may not be great. And you may think, flipping it, you're not putting a big scar on my tummy, but it's a difficult problem to um, correct. We, well, don't know if you mentioned slipping rib as my battery died. Sarah, I haven't mentioned slipping rib. I haven't got to it yet. I'm just going through the, uh, can I ask where you went, please? When? Oh, I went to touch wood. Is that it? Thank you. We'll send a email with email. Yes. In your opinion, <laughs> can I not do my disclaimer again? Okay. Why would I'm going to, I will do the slipping rib. I'll do the slipping rib after this because I feel bad about the slipping rib because, um, um, because uh, Sarah's waiting for the slipping rib. In your opinion, why would you stomach, you, why would your stomach bloat slash swell at 12 weeks post tummy tucks with MMR, muscle repair, okay, and liposuction, if you're quite flat from three to 11 weeks. Um, well, a couple of reasons. Number one reason is that often what happens is when you first have it done, you wear your binder religiously, you don't really do much, everything can be quite tight. And uh, sometimes this isn't common. So it, sometimes it's often quite swollen to start with, and then it gets uh, less swollen later. But if you're asking what if this has happened, so you're okay to start with, and then 12 weeks um, you've got a, a bit of a swelling, then what that might be is that um, you've started to be a bit more active. So often at 12 weeks, um, you might, we might say, look, get into life a bit more, get back to work, get back into doing things, maybe the gym and stuff like that, and that might make, might make it swell a bit. Maybe you're wearing a binder less. Uh, also, you, there's seroma, you know, fluid. You could have get, get seroma fluid uh, collecting, which might be a, a cause for swelling. Uh, it's nothing particularly to worry about. I would say just where you, if you are swelling, it might be that you're doing a bit more, which is good because it's good to do stuff. So don't really, you know, you don't want to be bed bound or anything, but just be aware that maybe you need to um, take it a bit easy. Uh, maybe go back to wearing the bind or some kind of support uh, and go see your surgeon, you know, go see a surgeon will be the best thing. But um, it's nothing particularly to worry about. Um, and it's and the other thing I'd say is a tummy tuck is a big operation and it takes ages for things to settle and 12 weeks is still relatively early days you know it takes many months for everything to properly settle so you can get niggles and you can get issues and problems months after a um, tummy tuck but I won't be particularly worried about it sissy says hi oh sorry I'm gonna go straight to the slipped rib now because I feel better and I'm gonna talk about the Madonna lift and Malibu lift oh my god in a minute um, so Slipped rib. Come on, Sarah. Where's the slipped rib? Here we go. Here we go. Right. Will slipping rib syndrome?